Good evening, my name is Garrett and welcome to Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Barrel Craft Spirits. This is Armida coming in at a 56.41% ABV, no wage statement. Now, I've never had anything from Barrel Craft Spirits, but um, I have been told and read a lot of reviews that say they bat pretty solid. Uh, they do a lot of cask strength, and they do a lot of sourcing and blending and unique casks. And from my perspective, I love unique casks when companies actually take time and source specific ones and try them out to see what happens. I love seeing that. And this one, just the sound of it took me by surprise, and I knew I had to grab a bottle of it. Now, the interesting thing behind this one is they actually sourced their bourbon from both Tennessee and Indiana and rested them in Jamaican rum, pear brandy casks, and Sicilian Amaro cask, which is kind of like a bitter liqueur. Let them do their thing in those barrels and then blended them back together afterwards. So, as always, we're trying it two different ways. First way, neat, no ice, no water. Second way, we'll add a drop of water, see what changes up. But yeah, as soon as I seen this, I love unique things. I love what... Uh, rum can do to whiskeys so i'm very curious what's going to happen i love the bottle shapes and i see them around now and again but more recently they've been popping up uh depending on how this one turns out i'm really kind of digging the dovetail which um, is a whole different one as well i'm excited to see how this one goes love its color too almost orange like it is like light orange colored it's beautiful all right let's go for notes Ooh, ooh, that is yeah you could definitely tell the rum influence oh my gosh it's sweet for days but you do get a bit of the sugarcane rum notes going on here. That pear is really popping out really well. Now, I've never had Amaro, uh, the Sicilian bitters. So I don't know quite on that one. But you get this beautiful sweet pear. You actually get a little bit of a spice note going on in there too. Not a lot. It's very, very light. But the Jamaican rum is really shining here, and you're getting a bit of that, uh, not, not quite the uh, cream soda note that a lot of my rums that you tend to pick up, uh, but you get a beautiful vanilla with a little bit of the caramel going on there. It has just a nice, just a nice sweet texture to it. And then you have this nice light spice in there. No real ABV on the nose either. A little bit of that um, almost almost honey notes going on in there. Yeah. Oh, that is beautiful. All right. Let's go for taste. Wow. Definitely, it's bitter on the taste. But sweet. The rum influence is coming through very well. Mm. I'm trying not to get too deep into it because I want to acclimate to the higher proof that we're getting right now. Mm. Okay, let's go for actual notes now. Got a good warmth to it from the ABV. Mm. Little of, definitely get that sweet pear in there. Bit of sugary sweetness, that bit of caramel. But here in the late, I'm getting almost a leathery tobacco going on here at the near the finish. And it moves up the front to the front of my tongue. Like it started in the back of my palate and just moved up front. And now like the tip of my tongue area is all leathery dry almost. That is weird. Sweet though. Definitely. If you're not a big sweet bourbon person, this may not be for you. Very dessert-like, almost like a spicy carrot cake concept to it. 
like I love carrot cake. And at Trader Joe's, they have these uh, uh, inside out carrot cake sandwiches where this, the cookie is, at, it's like a, a carrot cake top and bottom and they got some icing in the middle. That's what this is reminding me of. It's sweet, it's delicate. I wouldn't want a large glass of it. But check those cookies. I usually cut one in half because I'm like too much of one. But it's sweet, the caramel shows up, the pear shows up, that spice quality is showing up. Very dessert-like. And it's surprisingly, the ABV, while it's got a good warmth to it, it really isn't overpowering to the point of you going, whoa, back it up here a bit. It's actually really solid. Wow, okay. Let's try with a little bit of water. See what changes up. Very curious what the water will do. And again, this is the first time having a barrel craft spirit, so I'm really, I'm really loving what they're doing with this. Mm. Mm. And the 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 finish for this is just lingering for days. Let's go for notes. If anything, it dialed up the ABV just a, a, a tick or two. Really not a lot. And it dialed back the sweetness a bit. The, you still get a bit of that spice. The pear sweetness is still there, but everything is very muted comparatively to the neat version. Yeah, you're still getting a lot more character here, but it's it's similar but different enough that it's just dialed back. Let's go for taste. Drinks a little warmer. Definitely not as sweet. Goes more bitter now. But you're still getting that rum influence by that sugary, caramely note going on. Got a good warmth to it still. Surprisingly, the ABV doesn't like kick you in the teeth. I'm really surprised going that high at 56%. It's got a good mouthfeel to it still. Definitely not as long, not as lingering. I don't get that, that sharp leather tobacco note anymore. I'm getting a nice solid spice. Bit of that sweet pear, bit of sugar, caramel going on. Almost a toasted quality to it now. Mm. I'm trying to see if I get that toasted quality. I'm not really quite getting it over here, but here, definitely, it is popping really good. Still got a good mouthfeel to it, but not quite as strong as the neat version. Definitely an experience. If it cuts back on the sweetness, if you're an individual that does not like a lot of sweet bourbon, that does help it out a bit. It's still fairly sweet, but not as much as the neat version. All right, let's talk about market price because we all know market price is market price, and it's always going to vary. Picked this up for eighty-six dollars, and I've seen it go as low as like eighty-three dollars. I've seen it go as high as like mid nineties. Yeah, okay, um, I mean, do I like it? Yeah. Um, do I love it for $86? I think that's a, I, I would pay, I would pay in the 80s for it. Like, this is almost, I'm not going to say it's like aperitif quality, but it's something that you want such a small amount. Like, this is like, I want something sweet after dinner, and I want to enjoy it. That's kind of the concept I'm feeling with this one. Is that a bad thing? No, I don't think that's horrible at all. I wouldn't overpay for it. Up into the 90s plus, I don't think it's quite in that price range. There is a limited number of these out there as there always tends to be with their barrel craft series, it seems. Uh, but I have to say it's really good. I would pay, I'd feel comfortable in the, in the $80 range on it. But definitely this is either gonna be for a gift or it's gonna be somebody that wants something sweet for after dinner, or maybe just somebody that likes to pour sweet whiskeys for themselves or for other people. This is a great, great bottle for those kind of situations. So yeah, there you have it. Barrel Craft Spirits Armida. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, 
let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirits I should go looking for, let me know down below as well. I am always on the hunt for something unique and different to try. And as always, may your last trick of the night be the best one.